Mr. Speaker, I think you certainly surprised all of us this morning by, introduced, by inviting such distinguished persons to join us in the House. And of course, I, without the advance notice from you, I was not able to prepare a text to circulate as is required in the deliberations of the House. But I could not help as the Minister responsible for Creative Industries to stand and to show my support for the kind gesture that you made to invite the monarchs to be here with us today and for this House to express to all the winners our absolute delight at their successes over the last few days. We've had a fantastic carnival season since it has started. And of course, now that we've ended the national events, the national competitions, of course, we go into the final week of celebration when the private parties and all the fets and all the other attractions that we have for carnival would start to take place and culminate with the national parade on Monday and Tuesday. So I certainly appeal to all my parliamentary colleagues to make sure that you all attend some of the parties, whether it's escape, whether it is um, the brand threats. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, can I ask for your protection, Mr. Speaker, from my colleagues? You have um, I am grateful to the member from Castries North, the Minister for Infrastructure, for ensuring that the wall next to the comprehensive school was repaired in time, Mr. Speaker. And somebody posted on social media yeah. suggesting that that was the priority of the government to repair this wall. Yes. But Mr. Speaker, this is my takeoff for this morning. It is because those individuals do not fully appreciate the importance of the creative industry in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Because they see the creatives, they see those individuals behind us as people who are just concerned with bacchanal, to behave bad on the road, to drink, to be drunk and misbehave. It is more than that. More than that. And I certainly look across to my colleague, the representative for us, Roselle, Mr. Speaker, and I know he will lend support to me, Mr. Speaker, when we say, Mr. Speaker, that the creative industries in St. Lucia is a significant economic and cultural activity. And Mr. Speaker, the priority that this government has given, the priority that we have given, is to make sure we increase our support to all individuals involved in the creative industries in St. Lucia. That is the priority we've given. Because we believe, Mr. Speaker, that every single one of them behind us is a talented St. Lucian who can contribute, Mr. Speaker. We believe that we need to establish a creative economy in St. Lucia. The jazz, the carnival, Junel Creole, Mr. Speaker, all those activities, if we, if we interconnect them, if we create the linkages between them, we can actually establish a series of cultural and economic activity that can create sustainable livelihoods, Mr. Speaker. Just think about it. If you have five fashion shows a year, those models know they can look forward to at least five shows. Designers know they can look forward to five shows. The seamstresses look forward to five shows. The hairdressers, the cosmetologists, all those individuals that can start contributing to just that one single creative expression, that of fashion. And I give my thanks to the, the member from Soufre, the member for Com uh, Minister for Commerce, for really push, pushing through export solution, that aspect of our creative industry. But in Carnival, Mr. Speaker, we have with us, and you did indicate the different monarchs, from the Carnival Queen who is a symbol of resilience and strength, Mr. Speaker. You know, you, you know at, the, at the pageant, the question was asked, the interview question was, what is the, the greatest misconception that is held about beauty pageants? And she is a statement of that misconception. Because more than just beauty, it's brains, it is character, and it is you know, that strength that we need in our society. I don't have to say much about Afa, Mr. Speaker. He, he had the creative audacity to take a break and say, I'm coming back to what I coming back for what belongs to me. The groovy crong, Mr. Speaker. And he came back and he proved 
that superb talent that he has, Mr. Speaker. And I think he made a very powerful point that he has to be a carnival ambassador for the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. He should be one, and he will be one, Mr. Speaker. You have Tid Lacks, Mr. Speaker. You know, last year, I whispered to him that he's a future king. Don't worry for all the noise that was going on around. He's a young man of tremendous talent, Mr. Speaker. And I knew he had that quality in him, just the way he handled all the issues that were surrounding him last year. He was not arrogant, he was not flustered, he was not angry, he was not bitter. He took it in stride. And he came this year and he made the most powerful statement by winning the Caribbean Honor. So, Mr. Speaker, that is a statement of what we are capable of achieving in St. Lucia. The Intercommercial Queen, I heard her perform that night and I really thought she was a seasoned, experienced performer, the way she dropped that song on that night. And I asked her earlier, have you ever sung in a competition before? And she said, no. I can tell you, if she gets better than she was at the Intercommercial, then a lot of people have to be worried. T Blacks have to be worried for the Caribbean <laughs> Honor Speaker Speaker. Because she did it. And you know what was interesting? I was on the stage when we gave her a trophy. Her little daughter came and joined her, and the daughter was singing the song better than her. So, Mr. Speaker, that. And of course, nerdy Mr. Speaker. When you see him perform, you hear how he moves the crowd. He belongs on the international stage. He does. You know, we've had Tedison John, we have Ricky T, we've had many of the guys that have gone beyond our, our boundaries, our borders, Mr. Speaker. But when you see him perform, don't mind his humble and assuming way. He, he takes charge of the crowd and he performs, Mr. Speaker. I must tell him, my favorite for the night was Jacques Rosilly, but there was no doubt in my mind after he performed that he should, have, he should win, Mr. Speaker. And he's a talent, Mr. Speaker. And I give all of them the assurance that this government treats the creative industry as a priority. We've invested a lot of money and we will invest even more, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that our young people in St. Lucia who have that dream that they do not necessarily think of being a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, but they believe that they can express their creative talents and make a livelihood out of it, this government stands with you and will support you, Mr. Speaker. So thank you very much for bringing... Huh? No, we are clocking out there. We have some bills to pass. We're not clocking out. <laughs> You have some bills to pass, so yeah. somebody else clock out. But anyway, yeah. no, no, he did model on one occasion. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, all right, Mr. Speaker, thank you so very much for inviting our creatives here. Thank you very much.